Okay, ladies and gents, I've got something quite interesting for you today. This is a medical endovascular coil detachment device, and that's a bit of a long, complicated name for a current source. Uh, so it's a controlled voltage current source that is used during minimally ac minimal access surgery to release a surgical device. So a surgeon will puncture a hole in, in a groin artery, on the end of a very long wire, they'll then advance a tiny piece of, of coiled, springy platinum wire and in, deploy it into an artery, say, an abnormal artery, say, in, around the brain. And that springy platinum wire will be soldered to a pushing wire, which may be, you know, a metre and a half long to get from the groin to the brain. Um, and it'll be soldered with a piece of um, electrolytic corroding solder. And by applying an electric current to the coil and wire, the soil, the solder will electrolytically corrode and the coil will be released. So this is a very delicate piece of equipment so it's very high, this needs to be done with very high reliability, it may take the doctor or the surgeon you know 45 minutes of fiddling around in a very high risk area to get the coil into the relevant place and you know if the coil fails to detach the, the coil has to be pulled out and if this is like the third or the fourth coil that's going gone into an artery around the brain, you really don't want to pull it out because it might pull the others out and then you've got a real mess in your hands. So, on the face of it, a very simple device. You press the button, produces an electric charge between one terminal here, one terminal here, and the current passes through the patient's body and it dissolves the electrolytic solder. And you've got some indicator lights here it's telling you that uh, there's, a, there's an appropriate connection between the detaching coil and the ground electrode. This is a light that tells you the release has failed, and this is one that tells you the release has occurred correctly. So, pretty simple stuff. Single-use device, there's your battery warning light, and there's a light telling you you've got a good connection if you're using a got a second coil connected there or a second electrode. So what does it look like? Well here we have a look. So this is a really interesting PCB. As you might expect there's a fairly big microprocessor there, fairly standard Texas Instruments microcontroller which unsurprisingly is the heart of any kind of modern device such as this. Next to it we've got a few little op amps here, a variety of little op amps for sensing the current and sensing voltage, analog to digital converters and various things. I think this one here is an analog to digital converter. Um, and there's one or two other little things, op amps and various sensors and stuff. So pretty simple, but what's very interesting is just the manufacturing technology that's in use here. I mean, this is a very heavily multi-layer board. And what is very interesting is that I'm just trying to get this in focus, unfortunately my camera is not very good, is that very few of the traces actually run on the outer layer. Very few of them run out on the outer layer at all. Um, and the same is true on the back. On the back, here we have the quadruple A batteries, two quadruple A energizer alkaline batteries, a various a sort of diagnostic port here, a couple of little inductors, um, that's, that one there is in the EEPROM, it's got 512 kilobits of data storage. I don't know what that's for, maybe it's for calibration profiles, maybe it's for you know, programs that specific current voltage curves for the different coils, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a black box for recording events, I, I don't know. Speaking to the people that actually use these on a daily basis, they don't know either. This here is, is, is simply a connector to the other port here. This plastic tube is obviously a custom made connection unit so the what end of the wire pushing wire for the coil drops into there and uh, you've actually got three springy contacts here one two three which connect to the coil and I think some coils come coil wires actually have three rings you've got two here presumably for checking that the coil wire has been inserted fully and then we presumably we've got a, a, a coil electrode which goes to the tip and we've got a sort of ground reference electrode that is exposed a little bit uh, nearer, you know, a little bit away from the uh, wire 
so that you get uh, the electrolytic effect and it avoids the need to stick a needle somewhere else in the patient to act as a ground electrode. Um, so going back to the PCB, um, there's very little, there are very few traces or far fewer traces than are actually needed for the circuit on the surface. The other thing that's very interesting is if you hold it up to the light is that the circuit board is completely opaque. There are power planes in it. So this is obviously at least a four layer board. The, the board is completely opaque. With, but what is interesting is unlike your regular power planes, it, it's, sorry, it's unlike, this can't be a four layer board. There must be at least six layers because the power planes are absolutely seamless. Um, completely seamless. So the only way that you can get all these traces in is on a six or possibly eight layer board. Also very interesting is actually we've got all sorts of things here. These vias here are, not all of them are, are through vias. In fact, most of them are buried vias or blind vias. So this is an extremely high technology manufactured board. I mean, this a circuit board like this would cost an absolute fortune um, to manufacture. And, and, and after all, it is a very simple circuit. You know, Most of these things are just little decoupling capacitors, few little resistors, op amps, you know, very elementary circuit. Up here we've got a little buzzer and push switch. But I guess that this manufacturing technology, you know, which is, you know, very impressive and it's sort of along the li same lines of the, as the manufacturing technology you'd use on something like an iPhone, is presumably to ensure that the device is relatively immune to um, electromagnetic fields. After all, if the, if the device misfires or fires at the wrong, self fires at the wrong time because the microprocessor has gone haywire, then that could have very serious consequences. Um, so I assume it's just because of that. Um, I really don't know. I've never seen anything built like this before. We've got a few test points here. I don't know what they mean. Ground, presumably that means current. No idea what those mean. And there's a little connector for the uh, other electrode connector. So, very interesting device. Um, one of these costs probably in the region of £400, just to give you an example. It's a single-use device. Um, and it'll, the, the batteries probably hold enough charge for, for 30 or so coils, which would be more than sufficient for the vast majority of procedures. Um, the coils, just to put a price on it, um, cost around one to two thousand pounds each. Um, so, in terms of the overall cost of the procedure, the the device is relatively low cost, um, and you know, a complicated coiling procedure could take you know three hours, perhaps four hours, and require you know one one senior uh, surgeon or doctor, and you know a couple of nurses, anaesthetist couple of x-ray technicians and all sorts so uh, these are expensive procedures but uh, um, a few hundred quid spent on a high reliability device seems pretty reasonable.